What's up guys, I'm Cyan Trail and this is Minecraft. Today, we've got a lot planned. I've got a little bit of an area set up to build my starter base in. I am sick of living in this small little, I'm not even going to call it a cave, just basically a hole. I'm sick of living in my hole in the ground and I'm ready to actually get this thing moving and ready to actually you know, have a starter base. I'm not building a complex like some of the other people. I think I'm just going to build small and then we will see where it goes from here. But I might end up swapping this around a little bit because at the moment my view is a mountain. But honestly, I think the mountain view could be, could be kind of nice. So we'll chop down some trees and we'll do a little bit of terraforming. But I've got a little bit of a clip to show you. Myself and Amos did a little bit of redstone and we converted another XP farm. We now have two. We've got a zombie farm and a skeleton farm. The skeleton farm, we did a little bit of redstone and we decided to auto craft it. That way we automatically get bone blocks and we spit everything else away. So while I'm working on this, you guys can watch the clip. Standing on your pillow. I'm sorry. Okay, that's my spare pillow. You know where my real bed is? You don't have one. <laughs> you could say it's mine. No, <laughs> no. Say, just, you know where my real bed is? Walks into my base. It's in here. <laughs> it's up there. It's that you can see it. I put it on oh. top of the tree. Oh, wait. And let's start digging. I you were going to use the water. No, I, I remembered that I was going to place the water after I jumped. <laughs> but I placed the water. So, like, I can hey. still get down here. And I also placed my bed. At least right you at placed the very your top. bed right here. Yeah, I placed my bed right at the very top so that in case I died, it would be fine. Okay. I'm going to start digging it out. So, what we're doing is we have a water flow that's gonna once they go down here they'll fall into this takes them a little bit but they will travel this way they will fall down and they'll flow and then they will automatically flow into this fence post the fence post is higher but i think i know my problem i gotta test the water flow to make sure it's automatic here <laughs> i had issues where they will just get stuck and not go all the way up Cool, cool, cool. Place this back. No! Place that back. Place that back. So all you have to do is get out. Alright, so I just have to build up the, the kelp first. Yeah, so build up the kelp, and then I'll break this sign. Ouch. I don't have a sword, though. You're good. Just stand there. I'm gonna need you to give me coordinates. All things considered, this does not take long to set up. Yeah, pretty fast. Alright, and then you can do the kelp. On the bright side, you got bone meal if you don't want to actually swim all the way up. True. So, I mean, I can I can help. Let's let's go back up to our bases and get some materials. We don't have to do it tonight. I, I think it would take a little bit too much. Take like five minutes. Easy. Let me know when you want to build. Redstone, yes. Go ahead and fill it. It's filled. Oh, you gotta do... You gotta do bone meal, not bones. Oh, wait a minute. I'm dumb. We have to do... Two crafters, don't we? Mm, yeah, we do. We gotta do a crafter into a crafter. I thought it was bones to bone, bone block. No. Be nice though. I mean, okay, so normally the line would come. Oh, wait a minute, because it would only be one item at a time, so it's clock speed. That's why. Um. But it won't be, because we're going to be. It won't be, yes. Batch grabbing. So, what you would end up having to do. Is one more layer. Not one more layer. Move all of this bottom area. Shift it over by one. Yeah. You can either go down one or over one. 
I think it'd be easier to go over one, personally. So, thought is, once you put the lava there... Are you gonna... Are you wanted to put glass? Yeah. You wanna be able to see it? And I guess it well, is a pretty cool light source. Alright, you gotta go quick, place it on that block. Three, two, one, place it. Nice. Alright, let's frame it with some... I wanted to wall most of this off anyways, because I don't want people messing with the redstone. And let's turn it back. Oh. Turn it back on, I guess. Uh, we don't have any extra hop, right? You do not, no. I can run back to my base and get some. Ow. Probably me. Ow. So, if I go... Yeah, you seem to be adding them. Nice. I feel good about it. We did this without looking up any tutorials. Like, did it take us a little bit? Would it have probably been faster to look up a tutorial? Maybe. Would it have been more efficient? Maybe again? Uh, I don't know. But it has been as fun, though. I mean, just in us testing, we've gotten 51 bum blocks. Plus 20 that I'm holding. Plus the 20 you're holding? I don't know why I have 20, but I have 20. It's a good starter. Yeah, I mean, all in all, for a couple hours work, pretty good. For a, a couple of amateurs who know redstone concepts. I hope you enjoyed watching me and Amos build the skeleton farm. It was a really fun redstone challenge, and it led me into this build. Well, at least somewhat indirectly. I have a bamboo farm down in the bottom, and I need to practice with auto crafters. Uh, the, uh, the bamboo farm is set up with a furnace array, and this is going to be free for people to use. However, this base is not just a base, it is also kind of a mini-game. Um, the people on the server are going to be trying to break into the basement so that way they can use the furnace array. And I think this is going to be a pretty consistent theme in my videos this season. I want to make a bunch of little mini-games. I think that really leads into the, the rogue mentality. And it's just hiding a bunch of secret stuff for people to find. I do have a little workshop area down here, and this will play into the game. Um, everything you need will be available in here. Uh, if it's if you need it to get to the basement, it's going to be here. Um, and yes, all of these chests are organized and sorted. Please don't steal my items. It's not part of the game. Um, I said it's it's open to the public. Uh, I've actually had someone already figure their way out. They uh, broke my redstone, which was not fun. I had to fix that, but it's fixed now. And it is officially open for people to try and break in. So, have fun, guys. I realized in all of my rambling about the game that I actually forgot to talk about the build itself. Um, this build is supposed to be a fantasy setting. It's just supposed to be some small little cottage, maybe. I was really trying to go for something that looked abandoned. That's why it's covered in vines, glow berries. There's mossy cobble built into the stonework. And I just, I really wanted it to look not grody and destroyed but not well maintained and that brings me down in here to my little dungeon this is where my furnace array is set up everything's working this will allow me to cook my items very very quickly but i gotta show you the redstone nobody should need to come back here um i ended up rebuilding my bamboo farm from last season 
but because of the auto crafter, it's able to be built a little bit easier. I don't have to worry about having as big of a bamboo farm. Um, the biggest concern with bamboo farms in previous versions was making sure that you had enough bamboo that you could burn through one item by the time it restocks. And, oh, I did forget. All of this is in the spawn chunks. So I'm trying to be very careful that I keep all of this redstone as compact and efficient as possible. I have shutoffs for my shutoffs and making sure that I've just got everything to where it can very quickly, it checks my hopper length, and I don't have redstone running when it doesn't need to be running. So this will craft into the bamboo block. This will go from bamboo block to bamboo plank. And then this one all the way over here will go from bamboo plank down to bamboo slabs. Now the bamboo slabs were frustrating because I want to make sure that I'm not ever making pressure plates or buttons. If I just fire these off, these will eventually create planks and buttons just because of the way it works. So I found out that you can lock it to 9, and then once it powers, it's going to depower that redstone torch right there, which is powering that redstone line, which is completely powering this crafter. If it doesn't have enough items to craft, the crafter will stay powered, and then I don't have to worry about runoff crafting of extra things so i pull that out and you can see it is powered and if i click here if i click if i click here it's still powered so it can't create the new item however if i come back over here and i remove an item you'll hear the bamboo is starting to be collected and these are now being crafted once this gets full it is now okay well those don't count because it was wrong so yeah that's not creating two three three is not creating anything so we don't have to worry about creating pressure plates and buttons if if i'm the one that messes with it that will cause it to fail but without messing with it it's going to continue to work oh and the barrel on top is just to stop lag and i am storing some extra there for right now oh it feels so good i love it so they can just come in here and they can use this as much as they want. They never have to worry about it because they will always automatically refill. As long as we don't just constantly run it all day, every day, forever, there'll always be stuff. And then they just uh, they exit and look for the note block. Note block, and they come out. Um, I'm going to show how I did this in case someone wants to do something similar. The difficult part about this is making sure that that gets to be a source block. So all you have to do is you make sure that you hide a waterlog stair, possibly slab, doesn't matter, there, and a waterlog slab or stair there. And then whenever the piston pulls it back, you give it enough time that it becomes a source block and then it shoots you back out. That brings me to what I want to work on for the rest of the video. As you can see, spawn looks a little bit different. Uh, a bunch of the guys have been really busy on getting their bases built and some paths made. and this just, this just took me a lot longer than it should have. I got stuck on the redstone. But I really want to go through and I want to take this path down here. And I want to connect it up to my zombie farm. So I'm going to throw you into a little bit of a time lapse. And we're going to get this path made. All right, we've got our path, which leads to, well, nothing right now. But I think next episode, we'll have to build something over there at the zombie hut. I'm thinking a small little fishing hut would be pretty cool. And that would be a nice little building to feed our eye to, so it's not just, well, this. 
We also do have the zombie spawner decorated a little bit more. I was sick of the standard hole, so I wanted to make it push it up a little bit. And I figured that way I could actually eat the bone blocks that we get from the bone farm. I think the last thing on the agenda for today is I need to build some place for people to put their prizes for the starter base contest. I am thinking that we're just going to build a little wishing well at spawn. Amos has that path going down and it kind of meets up in this little circle. And I think the center of that circle is going to be the perfect place to put it. And I think with this being a wishing well, the perfect way for us to build this is through wishing. So I wish for a wishing well. And we have our wishing well. I'm going to throw my redstone doohickey. And I am officially entered into the starter base competition. But I think that's about all the time we have for today. I really want to thank you guys for watching this video. And I hope you enjoyed it. And I can't wait to see you all next time. See ya!